the idea that whatever you believe about the world becomes true for the world. It is about what are your fundamental ideas about the world that you believe and are convinced are true. If you change that, that is the most important trigger for transformation. What you believe about someone else will affect how they show up to you. If you believe your partner is lazy, he or she is more likely to be lazy. If you believe something about your child, they are more likely to reflect that. Yesterday, there were two really big topics that I covered with you guys. And the, one of those topics was the idea of growth mindset. The idea of living with a deliberate intention to continuously grow. And I mentioned of all the things that we cover in growth mindset, the fifth element is the most important, and that is crafting your identity. This is something that I wish people would teach our children in schools. The idea that whatever you believe about the world becomes true for the world. Do you remember that story with Sarah Madani yesterday? Sarah spoke about how a eating disorder that she had was healed in a one hour hypnotherapy session with Marissa Peer. Now what's going on in a situation like that is that hypnotherapy is going into your subconscious and making you believe something new about the world. What you believe about the world often becomes what is true for the world. In my book, The Buddha and the Badass, I call this the act of identity shifting. So what we're going to do here is I'm going to teach you how to self-hypnotize yourself. You're going to learn a protocol in this presentation to craft new identities for yourself related to health or wellness or experiencing life with ease. And then you're going to learn how to implant those identities in your mind. And the implantation process is so fast, so quick, so easy, even though it sounds so disturbing when I say implantation process, that you are going to see results really fast. We're going to show you essentially how to master your mind. Now to understand this, the first thing you've got to understand is this concept. So in my book, The, Code, uh, the Buddha and the Badass, I wrote this quote down. The universe acts as a mirror. It reflects back to you what you are. The miracle of this is that you can shift your identity and the world will obey. The universe will not give you what you want, but will reflect back to you who you are. Now let me explain further. This idea came because around 2019 in May, we were hosting a big Mind Valley event in Portugal. It's called A-Fest. And one of the speakers who was on stage then was this amazing man, Reverend Michael Beckwith. So we were having breakfast one morning, just discussing how the day was going to unfold. And Michael Beckwith is the individual who has been in more documentary films than any other teacher of wisdom. He was also in the movie The Secret. So I said, Michael, it's been 20 years since that movie That Secret. Given everything you've learned right now, would you teach anything differently? And he said, absolutely, Vision. I would teach that the law of attraction is incomplete. In fact, the law of attraction is actually probably not going to work for most people. And Beckwith went on to say this, the more important thing is the law of resonance. The universe will not give you what you want. It will reflect back to you who you are. What this means is that what you believe to be true about yourself will be reflected back to you by the universe. Now, we're going to put this aside for a second, and I'm going to go into how we grow. And then we're going to come back to the law of resonance, and you're going to see how this connects. So we grow in terms of transformational theory through two things. We grow by shifting our models of reality. So our models are what we believe about the world. So somebody who believes that the world is painful and tough will experience a world that's painful and tough. You believe in a world of abundance, you will experience abundance. Now, if you think about your mind as a computer, computers have hardware and software. So this is one of the early Macintosh computers, hardware and software. Your models of reality are like your hardware. Your systems for living are like your software. So what are systems for living? It's your diet, it's what you eat, it's maybe your sleep ritual, it is what you learn culturally in terms of raising your child, it's the exercise routine that you do, it's your procedure for kickstarting your day when you get to work. These are all systems that you learn. Many people focus on systems. So we go to a gym, we take yoga classes, all of these are systems. The systems, however, are the software of your 
being. We forget to look at the hardware. The hardware is what actually causes the change. So let me give you an example. This is Jim Quick. So when Jim Quick gets on stage and he gives you a new model of reality, when Jim Quick says creativity is something you is not something you have, it's something you do. He's working on your hardware. He's giving you a new belief about creativity. That is a model of reality. When Marissa Peer hypnotizes someone, she's implanting in them a new belief that is a hardware shift. So just like in old computers, you can take out a hard drive that maybe is too small and put in a more powerful hard drive. You can take out beliefs that don't serve you and put in healthier beliefs. Now, let's talk about systems. When Jim Quick does his quadding thing, that's a system, it's a practice. When you study yoga, when you do 10X, when you take up WildFit, all of these are systems. Systems are habits, but models of reality are beliefs. So, going back to the analogy of the computer, what we are seeking to do is to continually upgrade your computer, to go from an early Mac to a modern Mac. But to do this, it's not just about the software, it's not about the apps you install, the yoga class that you do, or the, the, um, the diet that you take on. It is about what are your fundamental ideas about the world that you believe and are convinced are true. If you change that, that is the most important trigger for transformation. Any of you, want, any of you guys heard of this book, Psycho-Cybernetics by Maxwell Maltz? This book was written in the 80s. And uh, my dad's in the audience. This was one of the books that I found on my dad's bookshelf that completely changed my life. So Maxwell Maltz was a plastic surgeon, and he found that when he gave someone a nose job, he changed even the slightest thing about their appearance that their friends didn't notice. So he would adjust something about a person's nose, even their friends or their mother wouldn't notice. But they would feel different, and all of a sudden, they would start getting promotions in their career. All of a sudden, they would start dating the person of their dreams. What exactly was going on? So Maxwell Maltz went on to say, it's no exaggeration to say that every human being is hypnotized to some extent, either by ideas he has uncritically accepted from others or ideas he has repeated to himself and convinced himself to be true. We all are hypnotized, but we don't know we're hypnotized. So here's another really fascinating study. Now, this one was really intriguing. How many of you here slap on cologne or perfume when you go out? Okay, great. The people who raise their hands, those of you who are not raising their hands, sniff them. See how good they smell. Like, learn from them. So the, the rest of you smelly buggers might want to consider learning a new system, spraying on cologne. Okay, so spraying on cologne is a system. But there's an interesting belief associated with that as well. And it turns out that the belief is more powerful than the system. So in this study, they took men, and they had men walk into a room and stand in front of a camera and just introduce themselves. Now, these, cam these men who were introducing themselves in the camera, they were being shown on video to women, and women had to rate the men in order of attractiveness. Now, they did one little twist. There were certain men who, as they walked into the room, they were asked, they were given a really expensive cologne, and they are saying, spray this on, this is so good. Look at this brand, just spray this cologne on. It'll make you feel good. Now it turns out that the man who had sprayed on the cologne, on camera, was shown, were deemed to be more attractive by women. It's as if spraying on the cologne gave them a new identity of attractiveness. The women were watching this on a, on a screen, they could not smell the men but the men felt different when they sprayed on cologne. How many of you here feel different when you spray on cologne or perfume? How many of you here feel different when you wear a suit? This is why I wear suits. I just found that I perform better when I'm training or in a business setting when I wear suits. These little things change our beliefs. Even though someone may not be able to smell your cologne, there are subtle things that you're doing differently that cause them to deem you as more attractive. The belief, however, the model of reality is more powerful than the actual system, which is the act of spraying on. So, it, any one of you read the book Sapiens by Yuval Hariri? Yuval says the difference between us and animals is that human babies are like molten glass. They can be molded and shaped into anything. This is why a child can grow up to be a peacemaker 
or a warmonger, a Buddhist or a Christian or a Muslim, rich or poor. We shape our little baby humans with beliefs from the time they are young. And many of you are carrying the beliefs that were implanted in you by your parents from as early as being in the womb. So here's another crazy study, fit hotel mates. So in this study, the researchers were wondering, why is it that so many hotel mates in the United States are clinically obese and have really bad health, even though if you actually look at their job, they are running up and down stairs, they are flipping over mattresses, they are vacuuming, they're actually taking 10,000 steps a day. So they created this fake research project, they interviewed the maids, and they were just, the, the hypothesis of the project is that, as far as the maids thought, is that these researchers wanted to measure their health and well-being for insurance. But at the end of asking these maids questions, the researcher said this, wow, Matilda, did you know that based on what you're telling me, you are walking 10,000 steps a day, and doctors say that is really good, you must feel so healthy, you are doing such great things for your body. That's it. Now, one month later, they go back and they check the maids and their health biomarkers. All the maids who were given that statement were suddenly healthier. You see, these maids, in their mind, never saw vacuuming or walking upstairs, or hurling or making a bed as exercise. But when the researcher told them to see it as exercise, all of a sudden their bodies responded. So it turns out it's not even the exercise you do. It's do you perceive what you do as exercise. Now this is not an excuse to say, I'm going to eat peanut butter and jelly sandwiches every day, and the act of chewing that sandwich is exercise. There are limitations, right? But if you tell yourself that as I walk, as I pace, I, I take calls from home, as I pace and I'm on, on my AirPods in a meeting, I am giving my body the exercise it needs, your body will respond. Now, it turns out that it doesn't, your beliefs don't just affect you, they will affect everyone around you. Remember that story of how men became more attractive, even on camera when they spray on cologne? Same thing is true for a woman when she does her hair or when she puts something on, but it, your beliefs affect other people. What you believe about someone else will affect how they show up to you. If you believe your partner is lazy, he, is, he or she is more likely to be lazy. If you believe something about your child, they are more likely to reflect that. This is really weird. 1968 Pygmalion Effect Experiment. So what happened is, they lied to teachers. They told teachers that Tom, Ali, and Sarah in their class were gifted students, that they had aced this incredible exam on IQ. And they told the teachers, you are not allowed to, teach, to treat them any differently. You're not allowed to tell them that they are gifted. Just know that they are gifted. At the end of the academic year, Tom, Ali, and Sarah scored grades way higher than all of the other students. Something about the teacher's expectation of the child actually influence the child. What does this tell you about how you see your kids? Even how you see your boyfriend and girlfriend? How you expect someone to respond, what you expect of people, literally creates them. Your mind is creating everything about the world around you. Every relationship around you is also being created around by your mind. In fact, the people around you can be elevated by your mind, or they can be pulled down. That is how powerful your mind is. So in the book Atomic Habits, the author, James Clear, shares another really fascinating psychological experiment. How many of you here have trouble going to the gym? Raise your hand. It's okay, no one's judging. We all have trouble, including me, right? I was so busy this past weekend, I missed two gym sessions. But that's unusual. Usually, I love going to the gym because I adopted this mental trick from James Clear. So James said this, there are three ways to create a desire, a habit, a movement. The first is outcome. Outcome means you tell yourself, I want to lose five kilograms. And he says, that's okay. Some people are going to be motivated by that to go to the gym. But outcome-based desires, not very effective. There will be mornings when you will wake up and you'll go, oh man, it's so, so cold outside and I didn't sleep well. And Christina says, I need to practice self-love, so I'm going to love myself in bed and keep myself warm. That's outcome, right? Not very effective. Then there's process. Process is you tell yourself, I'm going to go to the gym 
two times a week, practice the 10X protocol for precisely 20 minutes each. It's better, you're more likely to go to the gym, but it's not the most effective. The most effective is an identity. An identity, says James Clear, is you tell yourself, I have the body of an athlete, and my body loves to work out. If you embrace that identity to the point where you start believing it, you will never miss a gym session. You just can't. Because when you wake up in the morning, as tired as you are, you will feel this impulse that your body loves to work out. It turns out identity hacking is the best way to install a habit. So back to Michael Beckwith, the universe will not give you what you want. Rather, it will reflect back to you what you are. This is not just spiritual beliefs. This is now proven in science. As James Clear mentioned, identity hacking is the best way to create any type of behavior. So, I want to share with you seven identities that I believe we need to take on. Seven enhanced models of reality that if you walk out of this door today, your entire life will change. Are you guys ready? So the first one is this, discipline. Discipline is the idea that you do better when you're happy. So if you're having a stressful day and if you're feeling a little bit sad, don't pour yourself back into work. Do something to elevate happiness. There's a lot of research right now that says that happiness fuels productivity. Salespeople sell 55% better when they're happy. Doctors are 19% better at diagnoses when they're happy. There's a remarkable, a remarkable book on this called The Happiness Advantage. Discipline is the discipline that your bliss is the most important thing. And I want to share with you a really interesting um, series of lessons on discipline. Let me read you this poem, one of my favorite poems ever. I was early thought to work as well as play. My life has been one long happy holiday, full of work, full of play. I dropped the worry on the way, and God was good to me every day. This poem sounds like it was written by a 19-year-old. It's super simplistic, seems very innocent, right? Life was been one long happy holiday. Really, really, your life has always been a happy holiday, full of work and full of play. This guy sounds like he's just not the most productive person you want to hire in your company. Never worried, drop the worry along the way. God was good to me every day, seriously, believing in God, that's like so like 19th century. But it turns out this poem was actually written by John D. Rockefeller, the richest man who ever lived in the last 150 years, richer even than Elon Musk. He wrote this poem at 86. You see, we think that hard work, that hustle, that the grind is what it takes to be successful. John D. Rockefeller didn't. Look at his words. He had the right beliefs about reality. Work and play, equally important. Drop the worry, because God has your back. The theory of the benevolent universe. So what you believe about the world is going to gift you. Now, this is a lesson I learned recently when I was interviewing Mustafa Salamer, who lives here in Dubai. So he is one of only 20 people in the world who has skied to the North and South Pole and climbed all seven of the tallest mountains on the seven continents. Right? Maria came very close, but Mohammed Salamir is one of 20 who did that. And I asked him, you know, when you're, he's almost died so many times, and I said, when you're pushing yourself in these uncomfortable situations in the sure cold and the agony of a blizzard, what keeps you going? And he said, bliss. When I, I, I look at where I am, I look at the pain, the, the, the fierceness of nature, and I just feel happiness in there. I learned that from my Sufi training. See happiness in everything you do. And that's how I became one of only 20 people to accomplish this. And by the way, this man grew up in a refugee camp. He worked five years washing dishes. He's basically a dishwasher, a Palestinian refugee dishwasher who got a job at a restaurant in London, washing dishes for five years, couldn't speak any English. And today, he's one of the world's greatest explorers. Discipline. Now, let's go on to the second idea, immunity to overwhelm. How many of you here experience stress or overwhelm? How many of you here understand that stress is bad for you and can kill you? Raise your hand. Okay, so stress can kill you and stress is bad for you. What if that belief is simply not true? There's a, pe a, a TED talk by Kelly McGonigal where she sa shares a really interesting set of research. It turns out if you believe stress is going to kill you, your body will experience negative health effects of stress. 
But if you believe stress is not going to hurt your body, you do not experience any negative health effects of stress. Stress is a complete mental construct that you are making up. You can be trained. You can be trained to completely be immune to overwhelm. You can be trained to elevate your stress response. It's literally easier than you think. Someone like Elon Musk is the CEO of five companies, and you think your job is tough. It turns out that how you talk to yourself will determine your body's response to stress. I had a manager at Mind Valley, and she every time somebody asked her, asked her if they could arrange a meeting or something, she would say, "You know, guys, I'm so busy." She changed her self-talk. Whether she'd say, "Hey, I'm fully optimized today. Look at my calendar. I'm fully optimized, but I can meet with you next week." That simple change, she told me, changed her reaction to stress. Kelly McGonigal goes deeper in her TED talk. Watch the TED talk; it is fascinating. And if you want to train your brain to become immune to stress, there is a really powerful meditation on Mind Valley. If you open up the Mind Valley app, click on meditations, type in "hypnotic trance bliss" by Paul McKenna. This meditation has transformed the lives of so many people in my team. Paul McKenna, you got to listen to it five days in a row. It's 23 minutes. Paul McKenna rewires your brain's stress response, and uh, it, it will change you. Hypnotic trance bliss. Okay. Now the third one is win-win relationships. We've been trained to believe that the world requires competitive competitiveness. We've been trained to believe that if you break up with someone, you have to hate them. Because love is meant to be happily ever after, and how dare they break that illusion? So, so much of our life is trained to be a battle between two people. I don't believe that. I have no competitors that I dread. I have no relationships, um, ex-relationships that I am not really good friends with, because I only believe in win-win relationships. But this is a belief that you can take on as well. I train with a really brilliant Chinese master. And one of the beliefs he says is the most important beliefs that human beings can take on is the idea that all human connections are to be win-win. You create positive vibes and generate great energy with everyone in your life. Now the fourth one is inspiration on demand. Any of you here studied the Silva method on Mind Valley? That is one of the most effective ways to be able to generate inspiration on demand. You can also take Sonia Shoket's new course, Six Sense Superpower. But intuition is real, and studies show that it correlates with your business performance. CEOs who score well on intuition tests, according to the Newark College of Engineering, actually have a higher rate of profitability in their companies. All of us can tap into intuition, but it's something that you can train your mind to do. Why not believe that you can channel wisdom and inspiration on demand? The fifth is abundance. Oh, this is the one that we have the most hang-ups with. Because we constantly hear that rich people are manipulated, billionaires don't pay their taxes, that to be rich means you're going to be an ass, a, a, a hole. Sorry, I forgot I'm in Dubai. So we hear this all the time, right? And this actually keeps you poor. There's nothing glorious about being poor. You can be born in the slums of Dhaka, and you still aspire to want to become a doctor or an engineer or a social media influencer. Nobody wants to be poor, and there's nothing wrong with being gloriously, fabulously, incredibly rich either. Pay your taxes, though. So abundance, really powerful belief. Sixth, flow and ease. What if life was just meant to flow in your favor? Professor Sri Kumar Rao, in his Mind Valley program, the Quest for Personal Mastery, says that the most important belief. Is that the universe has my back? It's called the belief of the benevolent universe. Remember that poem by Rockefeller, "And God was good to me every day." That relates to this. Life flows as almost as if it's blessed by luck and synchronicity. It almost feels as if you are held by a benevolent universe. Now, all of these beliefs, I can tell you, may be true for you or not true for you. But the decision of it being true or not is not me. It's not the world. It's not your parents. It is what you have taken on to believe. So you can literally flip the switch in your brain immediately. But I'm going to teach you a way to make that switch more flip with greater ease. That's coming up soon. One of the things I learned from one of the spiritual teachers I I I, I work with is this: 
to tell myself every day I solve any problem that comes to me in a fun, easy way. I solve any problem that comes to me in a fun, easy way, rather than associating problem with stress. I've started to associate problem with wow. How can I solve this in a fun, easy way? Now the final belief is bending reality. Your true wants seem to come to you with ease. Life seems easier as as you are supported by the benevolent universe. In Sanskrit, there's a word called Maya, which means the illusion of reality. I believe we can shift that illusion. I believe reality is a construct of our minds. You don't have to take that on, but know that many of the most brilliant people in the world believe that because they witness that. This is an abstract from the book Steve Jobs by Walter Isaacson. Isaacson was Jobs' biographer, and this is what Isaacson wrote about Steve. At the root of his reality distortion was Jobs' belief that the rules didn't apply to him. He had some evidence for this in his childhood. He had often been able to bend reality to his desires. Rebelliousness and willfulness were ingrained in his character. He had the sense that he was special, a chosen one, an enlightened one. He thinks there are few people who are special. People like Einstein and Gandhi and the gurus he met in India, and that he's one of them. I believe Steve Jobs' beliefs about himself and his ideas of reality were one of the reasons he was able to create such magical leaps in terms of inventions. The iPhone that many of you carry in your pocket came from this man's beliefs, and there were arguments with Steve and other people in his company. In one situation, Steve's former boss said they, they had a debate. So Steve worked for、uh, Bushnell, who was the founder of Atari, and they had a debate on whether things in the world were determined or programmed. If we had perfect information, we could predict people's actions. But Steve felt the opposite. That outlook, with his faith in his power of the will, that outlook accorded with his faith in the power of the will to bend reality. From an early age, Steve Jobs, who had studied in India, whose favorite book in the world was Paramahansa Yogananda's Autobiography Yogi, believed that reality was an illusion. By the way, do you know that when Steve died, there was only one book on his iPad, according to Isaacson. It was Autobiography of a Yogi. At his funeral, everybody got a gift bag with that book. Bill Gates walked out with Autobiography of a Yogi. If you read that book, that book is about the idea that the yogic mind. Can bend reality, and everything we think is true in the world is nothing more than an illusion. Read that, and maybe you'll start to understand how Steve Jobs became probably the greatest inventor CEO of the last 100 years. So remember this: outside the rules of physics, all other rules are illusions that you have chosen to believe. You can smash the ones that no longer serve you. Are you guys ready to now start smashing them? So. Here's how to hypnotize yourself. It has to do with the power of questions. Now, this technique comes from this Mind Valley teacher called、uh, Christy Marie Sheldon. Christy Marie Sheldon is a mystic.、Uh, she she goes into、um, her own spaces and she doesn't want to be reached on email or WhatsApp. So it's harder for us to get us on stage. But in 2015, I got her on stage, and her program, Unlimited Abundance, is available for all of you on Mind Valley membership. It is an, a remarkable program that removes all your beliefs. That hold you back from wealth. So, I recorded this video with Christy one day, and I forgot about it. This was around January 2015. But I want you to pay attention to what she's saying because there's so much wisdom in this video. It's just two minutes fifty seconds. Hey there, this is Christy Marie Sheldon. Thank you so much for joining this community and bringing your positivity. <laughs> I enjoy helping others, and today I thought I would share a quick tip that I use, and、uh, I teach my clients and friends the same technique. So let me ask you this question: How many of you have ever thought any of these questions? Have you ever thought, "How come I'm always broke?" or "How come my life stinks so much today?" <laughs> or "How did I get so many bills?" or How come I'm the only one that does anything around here? Or on a personal level, maybe you've asked inside yourself, how come my friends or my maid or my family isn't around for me when I need them? Well, can I share with you a secret? Those type of questions are stopping you from getting what you desire. They are blocks to your personal and financial freedom. They are stripping away, <laughs> just literally deleting your manifestation powers. 
How? Well, let me give you an example. I want you to think for a moment of a pink elephant. Okay. <laughs> now, what did you think when I asked that question? You know, obviously, I told you to think of a pink elephant. What popped into your head was pink elephant. So when you ask the type of questions that I mentioned before, like why am I broke or why does my life stink so much today, you're basically sticking your head into negative, no win, unhealthy, lower vibration energy. And the universe will only answer you back with all the reasons why you're broke or why you're stuck. It will say to you, hey, here you go, Stephanie, or here you go, John. I will keep showing you all the reasons why your life stinks today and why you have so many bills. <laughs> so you're probably thinking, why in the heck would the universe torture me like that? Well, it's because you asked. You asked for all the reasons why, and the universe loved you so much, it responded to your request and it showed you. So my tip for the day is to ask a lofty question. <laughs> What's a lofty question you're probably thinking? Well, a lofty question is a question that skyrockets you, it lifts you, and it skyrockets the universe into positively manifesting your dream. It's an action-oriented question. Ponder this type of question for a minute. Why do I have more money than I need? Or why do I have more than enough money to pay my bills, save money, and have some left over to have some fun with? <laughs> That's a cool question. Can you see what would happen to your focus? If you're thinking of ideas that generate more money than you need, abundance and more than enough and that kind of energy is what's going to fall in your lap. You see, the universe loves you so much, it will support you and answer your questions. Ask and it is given. So try asking some lofty questions today and see what type of things you start to focus on. Try this lofty question on for size. Why is my life so amazing? <laughs> it exceeds all my expectations. Or how about this lofty question? What's the million dollar idea that I can manifest into my life today? Or how about this lofty question? How can the universe give me more than enough help than I ever thought possible? Or how about this one? <laughs> what kind of person can I become that will amaze the world? Okay, that's my tip for the day. Have some fun, share your lofty questions and what happened for you on this website and uh, let us know what happened. Many blessings to you and thanks for sharing in this community. So that video was posted on the Mind Valley YouTube channel in January 2015, right? And, and I, I basically filmed that with my iPhone when I was visiting Christy, but it didn't sink in, it didn't register. About one year later, I remember, I turned 40 and um, I woke up that day, I looked in the mirror and I realized I'd failed all of my health goals. So this was January 2016. And somehow, on that particular day, I was just analyzing a YouTube channel, and I see this video, and I click play, and I go, wow, this, this is kind of interesting. Let me try this. So I composed these three lofty questions, and in the morning, when I was doing my sixth phase, in phase four, I would repeat these three lofty questions to myself. Why do I have the fit muscular body of an athlete? What is my body healing, rejuvenate itself as I sleep? Why is my body getting younger and younger every year? Now, I'd been going to the gym, I'd hired a personal trainer, I'd been on diets for the last decade from 30 to 40, but I couldn't lose the excess belly fat. I couldn't like stop myself from getting a dad bod. I tried all of these different things, nothing was working. What I'm gonna share next blew me away and this is why I'm so excited about lofty questions. Within three weeks of repeating these questions to myself, I'm at an event in Costa Rica and I bump into Eric Edmeads, who offers to put me on his program called WildFit. Back then, WildFit was just something he did for his friends. In 90 days, my body transformed. Two months later, I bump into Lorenzo Delano, who is the researcher in Mind Valley who developed 10X. And I had no idea that Lorenzo had this whole like bodybuilding philosophy. And he ended up training me. And six months from then, my body changes again. For a decade, I was trying to just get healthy with no results. When I started implanting these lofty questions, not only did my body respond better, but I started bumping into the right people in the right circumstance. This is why I believe that our mind is not just affecting our body. These questions are not just letting your body know that it needs to heal. 
I believe these questions will literally also influence the people who come into your life, the conversations you have, the books you discover. Now, I don't know if this is the brain's reticular activating system, so it's making our brain more aware of pattern recognition, so I'm more alert when I see Eric Etmeads, or it's manifesting. We don't have to worry about that. We don't have to understand how an iPhone works to be able to use that iPhone. This is what happened to my body in a relatively short amount of time. My body physically transformed. I just did an age test called glycan age. I'm 47 years old. I have the body health of a 20-year-old. I have no illnesses, no allergies, no prescription medicine. And all of you can do this as well. Marissa demonstrated yesterday, like we did not know that Sarah healed her eating disorder until just before going on stage, Sarah told me, Vision, the most amazing thing happened. Today I ate potatoes and carbs for the first time and nothing happened. I didn't have to vomit. Your bodies can respond dramatically to the identity that you have chosen to take on. Diets don't work. 1% of diets work. 99% do not work because diets do not work on identity. WildFit does. WildFit is based on behavioral change dynamics. It's shifting your identity. 10X is based on behavioral change dynamics. But these are examples of lofty questions you can create for yourself. Feel free to take a picture of that, okay? Now, let's go on further. Let's craft a lofty question for all of those seven fundamental identity beliefs. Are you guys ready? Now, before we do this, let me explain why lofty questions work. In the early 80s, Jose Silva, as he was developing the Silva method, already found that affirmations do not work. If you tell yourself, I only eat healthy foods, there's a voice at the back of your head that's going to go, no, you don't. You ate that pizza one week ago, fatso. We always doubt ourselves, right? And if you're thinking, I don't have that voice, that's the voice. Now, lofty questions overrides that voice because this humbleness that we have within us, this, this stubbornness, this clinging to our own identity, we're not disrupting that. Rather than say, I only eat healthy food, we are asking a question, why do I only eat healthy food? Why do I only eat healthy foods? Why do I only eat the foods which are nurturing and nourishing for my body? And for some weird reason, this causes it to sink into your subconscious more. Your subconscious goes, the big boss is asking a question. Let me sort this out. And then your subconscious somehow responds with that new identity. So these are, this is how you want to do it. First, you want to choose your identity. So I gave you seven different identity models, but there's many other models you can use. Remember this process from James Clear. Second, prove it to yourself with small wins. So you're not just going to create a lofty question, why do I only eat healthy foods? The next time you go to the buffet at the Dubai hotel you're staying at, just add a tiny bit more vegetables to your plate, right? Step three, when you meditate, you program your identity with lofty questions. So here are some of the lofty questions. For bliss, why am I surrounded by bliss and happiness no matter what? You can write this down and you can repeat this to yourself. The word no matter what is a Lisa Nichols phraseology. You'll hear from Lisa Nichols today. Why am I surrounded by bliss and happiness no matter what? Why am I able to do so much in so little time? This lofty question probably added hours to my day. Why am I always surrounded by love and amazing people whom I'm deeply connected to? Why am I so brilliant, so genius, and so able to tap into source for instant inspiration? You can replace the word source with God or universe or whatever you resonate with. Abundance. I love this one. This came from Tony Robbins and his documentary, I Am Not a Guru. I saw Tony stating this to himself in a mirror. Not as a lofty question, but I rephrased it as a lofty question. Why am I so good at making, keeping, and multiplying money? Tony's exact phrase was, why do I have avalanches of abundance falling down on me for all my dreams, desires, and intentions? Flow, why does the universe always have my back? Or, why do I solve all problems in a fun and easy way? And bending reality, why do my dreams and goals come to me with such ease and speed? The world will reflect back to you what you truly, deeply believe you are. Your identity will create resonance with the world. Okay? Now, what we're going to do is I want to feel free to take uh, pictures of this. Okay? So these are example lofty questions. I want, you're going to make a list of around 
seven or eight lofty questions. I actually read 40 lofty questions to myself every single day. If I forget them, I, I have them on like my iPhone, but I try to memorize them. But you don't have to memorize 40. You can memorize five or six or seven. Here are some example lofty questions for well-being. Okay, take a picture. And if you want, these are example questions for creativity and inspiration. Again, take a picture. For abundance and power. And keep your cameras up. This is for love and connection. So all of these are useful lofty questions that you can try. Okay, now let's actually program this into you. We're gonna do this in two to three minutes, okay? So I want you to relax. So you want to repeat the lofty question to yourself in a state of meditation. When you're at the alpha or relaxed level of mind, you are able to better program your subconscious. Now, yes, you can repeat this to yourself anytime, but it's better when you're relaxed. Notice a hypnotist relaxes you. So where are you relaxed? Maybe when you're sitting in front of a warm fire, when you're meditating, when you're in prayer to God, when you are taking a shower, all of these moments are great moments to repeat lofty questions. For now, we're gonna do it in a short meditative state. Close your eyes. Beautiful meditation music, please. I'm gonna count from 10 to one on each descending number. You are gonna feel yourself relax and sink deeper and deeper into a level of meditation. 10, nine, eight, deeper and deeper, seven, six, deeper and deeper, five, four, three, two, one. You're now in a deep, relaxed state of mind, deeper than before. I'm gonna repeat seven lofty questions for yourself. You don't have to do anything or visualize anything. As you hear my voice say these questions, repeat it in your voice for your mind. Why am I surrounded by bliss and happiness no matter what? Why am I able to do so much in so little time? Why am I always surrounded by love and amazing people whom I'm deeply connected to? Why am I so brilliant, so genius, and so able to tap into source for instant inspiration? Why am I so good at making, keeping, and multiplying money? Why does the universe always have my back? Why do my dreams and goals come to me with such ease and speed? And you may now open your eyes. Okay, so those are just seven lofty questions that I love and I use. You can choose to adopt those. You can write your own. You can literally program your body to heal and rejuvenate itself and reverse aging as you sleep. You can program your body to lose weight. You can program that only loving people enter your life. Whatever you believe about the world, will literally influence the world around you. And everything you experienced about the world in the past was in alignment with your past beliefs. Can you see how simple this technique is? It takes just a few minutes and you can embed this in your meditation. If you do the phase, six phase meditation, it's in phase four. So thank you guys. I hope you enjoyed this session.